Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Say hi, Terry. Hello. So usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics. Yay. Because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pull our heads out of the parenting books and out of our computers and talk exactly. about things that are completely frivolous. Right. Well, oh, we live for Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> we um, we're going to continue today. What we started last week was my little report on all of the entertainment that I consumed while flying across the ocean um because as we said last week it was this awesome little like bubble of time where i just got to sit in a chair and watch movies and tv (laughs) before you go on with that i just want to say we need to start doing this at the beginning of the show i want to tell everybody what all we're going to be talking about in case you come into this from a quote or a tweet and it says we're going to talk about Parks and Rec and then you have to sit and listen through 20 minutes of something else before we get there. Right. So today we will be continuing our Parks and Recreation Marathon. We will also be talking about the West Wing, which we are marathoning along with the West Wing Weekly Podcast. And then we will chat very briefly about So You Think You Can Dance and the Hamilton. But first, Catherine, tell us some more about what you watched. <laughs> While you were traveling. And I'll also mention that if you go to parentingroundabout.com, you can yes. find out exactly when during the podcast, um, the time stamp for each of those topics. Yes. If I am um, so conscientious as to provide them. <laughs> yes. No, no, I guess I have to. Thanks, Catherine. Okay. okay. You know, I like to make work for you. <laughs> um, so, so two of the movie we talked about two movies last week, and then I have two more that I watched um, on okay. the flight. One of them was Brooklyn, um, which was based on a novel by Colm Tobin that I had read a few years okay. ago. And this is the movie that starred Sheer Ronan. I think that's how you say her name, um, who got a lot of attention around Oscar time. Um, the movie that caused many, 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 many TV commentators to have to learn how to pronounce that name. And boy, did I remember at the Oscars, they just pronounced it every second they could. <laughs> right. Show offs. <laughs> just to say, <laughs> right. I studied this. By golly, I'm going to say it a bunch of times and her her so character the- also has a somewhat challenging irish name which is eilish yeah. and and even uh, in the movie you hear her sometimes called eilish and sometimes called eilish and i don't so know even, yeah um, even the actors weren't sure <laughs> or perhaps the people in her town weren't sure i mean there's people who in your real life you don't aren't quite sure how to pronounce their yes, names absolutely so. So it's called them. Hey, you right. basically is my, is my uh, strategy. Hey, Irish girl. <laughs> so, so the movie and the book um, are about this this young woman Eilish who lives in this little town in Ireland, and I think it's like late forties, early fifties. Um, I should have looked that up, but anyway, she she's kind of in this dead end town in Ireland and her sister um, pushes her to move to the U S to emigrate and um, try to have a better life in the U S. So, because she's just like working in a shop on weekend, like all she, she doesn't really have a job. And so anyway, her sister arranges for her to emigrate and, um, she gets a job in the store. She takes night classes for bookkeeping. She lives in a rooming house with other Irish girls. Um, and it just kind of follows her, her introduction to living in the United States, um, And, you know, she's very homesick, but eventually she starts to kind of come out of her shell and meet people and she meets a guy. And um, so she starts to really be be happier. Um, But then she's called back to Ireland because of a family tragedy. And so then she goes back and then all of a sudden she gets a job and she meets another guy. And uh, (laughs) then it becomes a thing of is she going to, to go back, you know, will she now stay in Ireland since, since her circumstances have changed somewhat? Um, and her, her mother, you know, seems to really want her to stay. And, um, mm-hmm. so it's all about 
the decision that she makes, um, which I don't think I should reveal. I feel like it'd be a pretty big spoiler. (laughs) Spoiler. But I do, it's funny because regarding the ending, I remember when I read the book, wanting her to make one choice and then being annoyed that she didn't. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I was a little bit reluctant to watch the movie because I was like, oh, I'm going to be mad when she yeah. <laughs> when she does that. Uh-huh. Um, but then she didn't. She t- she did. <laughs> they switched to the ending? Well, and so then I was like, did they change that? Because I don't remember that from the book. And I'm really bad about remembering what uh-huh. happens in books. And no, it was the same. She made the same decision in the book and the movie. So uh-huh. I don't know if it was that in the movie they made a better case for her to make the choice that she did make so that I would want Cuter her. Cuter after than the one in your head made. <laughs> I don't know. So <laughs> anyway, it was it was much more satisfying than I thought it was going to be <laughs> because she did what I wanted her to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was overall, I mean, she's, she's a great actress, you know, she, her performance is wonderful in this and, you know, she's, she's on screen so much of the time mm-hmm. and it's a very sort of quiet, um, subtle movie and, and performance, you know, she does so much just with her face and her expressions, uh-huh. um, more so than what she says so it's it's yeah it's really good i liked it quite a lot nice and you watched this on an airplane i did okay <laughs> yes i think it would have you would have liked it as much in a theater big screen and distractions or i guess there's distractions on a plane i don't know i i wonder if some movies are better in a small enclosed space than right. they are you know in a big room with Lots of people and popcorn and right. Well, I mean, kids it's, wanting to go to the bathroom and I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely it's not the kind of movie that you need to see on a big screen, you know, because it mm-hmm. doesn't have like big special effects or anything. Yeah. So um, I will say that you should choose your airplane movies based on whether or not they'll make you cry because that's <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Because another movie that I could have watched was Room, you know, the one where oh. it's the, the mother and son who are trapped in a room. And oh, yeah, I, cramped I, spaces would have been appropriate for that. <laughs> right. And I, I had read that book, too, and, and I keep hearing that the movie's really good, but I'm just... I just didn't think I could handle it. <laughs> so. Well, were you, were you sitting on a plane by yourself, or were you surrounded by family members? Um, we were all in a row, and I was okay. on the end. So okay, so people would have seen you. Yeah, yeah people would have seen me. <laughs> you. Need to prune yourself against the wall, surrounded by you know, right. Uh, so then you have children wanting your attention. Right. So. Luckily, they were pretty occupied with their own screens. <laughs> so so if you skipped room, what was the uh, second one you saw? So the second one was a documentary, and I had read an oh. article. Yep. That's, <laughs> I, that's I do that sometimes. Taking medicine. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, this was, it was good. I had read about this movie in the New York Times, and um, it's also set in New York, like Brooklyn is, mm-hmm. um, although this is the Lower East Side, and it's the housing projects on the Lower East Side, and it's about this family of six boys, six brothers, they also mm-hmm. have a sister, but she doesn't really factor in the movie, six brothers who have been raised in this apartment, and extremely rarely allowed to leave the apartment. So like the documentary version of Room. (laughs) Yes, except there's six brothers instead of just (laughs) one kid. Um, And yeah, I mean, they were homeschooled and their father, you know, they showed him a little bit and they didn't fully come down on, but they kind of make it seem like he's sort of a, a paranoid type that you know he doesn't want his children exposed to anything in the outside world but yet he lets them watch movies like any Uh. and all movies (laughs) and so what they do because they have nothing to do all day Mm -hmm. is reenact all these films and they make costumes for themselves out of like 
cardboard boxes and cut up yoga mats and just all wow. kind of um, household stuff. And they make these elaborate costumes and then they reenact these movies. And it's kind of about them starting to break out of the family shell and, you know, starting to make tentative steps into the outside world. Yeah. Um, it, and it was fascinating. I will say that it was, it was difficult to follow because there's these six brothers. They mostly look alike. They all mm-hmm. have long, strange Sanskrit names. <laughs> um, so I could, yeah. I could not at all keep track of which one was which. Um, <laughs> And in the end, one of them actually moved out and got his own place. Wow. Um, but I can't tell. I don't know which one it was. <laughs> so it that was a bummer. Subtitles. It needed yeah. subtitles. Like every time one of them was talking, I needed to <laughs> Like know. those little chirons they put on, you yes. know, when they explain who people are. They right. just needed to continue that yes. every time. They you did. remember, this was the one who. Right. And then bullet points. Not just their name, but like a few other facts about <laughs> exactly. the person. <laughs> He's the third so oldest so brother dear. or, you know, whatever. He's the one who said this before. Yeah, this is the one where you need to like, if you were watching it at home, you could put closed captioning on just to keep track. I have right. a friend who does that for like everything. See, that's a smart strategy. Yeah. But, yeah. So it, it, was, it was fascinating. And they did even include some footage of the father talking so you could kind of see uh-huh. what he would and you know you you felt the most sorry for at least i did for the mother uh-huh. um, because she was really uh-huh. caught between what her husband wanted and what her kids wanted and what uh-huh. would be best for her kids i mean she talked about how she had grown up in the country and and she really wanted her kids to be able to run and play in the grass and things like that. And, you know, there they were in this like high rise apartment building and never, ever going out. Yikes. So it was really sad her, especially yeah. her parts of it. Um, but you know, the, the, the positives of it were that the, the boys were starting to yeah. emerge from this strange, cocoon and have they optioned this for a reality series on oh i don't know bravo or tlc (laughs) either we're gonna follow these kids into the real world or there's gonna be a watch a movie and make costumes for it out of these random household (laughs) items right i guess that would be the tlc and the bravo versions yes exactly coming soon to a tv near you the the one who moved out was um working in like film production so so it it it, you know it it had a a positive effect on him gonna be a great backstory sometime if he becomes famous right right (laughs) so so that was the wolf pack cool to have time to just like watch stuff like that exactly i mean i never would have done you only watch when you're sitting someplace and you have to watch something and you have a list of things right yeah, which never happens to me. I know, and it never it never happens to me either, except on this <laughs> one occasion. <laughs> Clearly, I need to travel more for the sole purpose of consuming. No, well, the pressure was really on. Like, okay, I have all these choices. <laughs> what am I going to do? It was tough. So. I took a train into the city, but I didn't even listen to an audio book the other day. I did work on my laptop, oh. so I lost my opportunity. <sighs> Well, so there. that's the last time you'll hear us talk about movies for a while. Yes. <laughs> no summer movies in your future? Did you guys watch Finding Dory? We haven't yet. See, I still want to. Did you go to, like, to. some Midwestern state and meet the person who... No, that it, that hasn't happened just because we've been gone. And so I yeah. know. I'd still, I have, we haven't seen that. And we also want to see The Secret Life of Pets. Oh, yes. I heard good things about that because... from somebody who has a pet. Right. And... <laughs> Said anybody with a pet has to go watch it. I yeah. really don't want to know. You know what? If, uh, <laughs> my girl is getting up to things while we're gone. That's okay. Let it stay a secret. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so a secret for a reason. So since we don't have any other, since we didn't actually watch those movies, we will move on to what we did watch. <laughs> One of these days we will discuss them if we see them. If you we know see what? Them. I'm always there's so much buzz about the go- new Ghostbusters movie. Oh yeah, pro and con. I almost feel like as a woman, I have a responsibility to go watch it and give them my twelve dollars or whatever mm-hmm. it is now. Just to say in your face, fanboys, because right. it's so ridiculous. Why can't they? I mean, I'm against reboots in general just because, mm-hmm. you know, you can still watch the original. It's not like it's lost to history. Right. But at the same time, to just kind of diss on it because it's women this time. Yeah, that's Makes right. me feel like, you know, mm-hmm. going to watch just because. Yeah. But probably that won't happen. <laughs> but if, Realistically. <laughs> I would go out and watch that. So, here's my vote. Oh, that's funny. <sighs> anyway, right. well, what we did so, watch well, was I also Parks did not and Rec. Take the advantage in the train of watching a Parks and Rec episode, which I also could have done on my phone. Right, I did not. But I did watch them. I did get caught up. So, so where we are f- for this week is we watched the Pawnee Eagleton Tip Off Classic, Doppelgangers, and Gin It Up. And that uh, those are the three that went with London, which we discussed last week. And so now we will, after this, I believe, go back to four a week. Right. So um, what did you think? Because these were some more political stuff, which I know is not your fave. Yeah, and yes. Uh, you know, again, I am just in the thing of the political stuff. I really wish I could fast forward through, but there are subplots that I love. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, you know, I hate seeing Leslie get dumped on. I understand the comedic value of it and the satirical value of it, but I just, not my favorite parts of Parks and Rec. And that's okay. You know, everybody can get what they enjoy and there's episodes in this season that I liked better and there's subplots in every episode that I like very much Mm -hmm. so I still enjoy watching them but boy we can't get through this part (laughs) 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 these political plots fast enough I'm thinking ahead to episodes I like better in the coming season and they're coming coming seasons Mm -hmm. so uh but, uh, you know, we, we continue here the trend in, of Latter-day Parks and Rec of them just getting random famous people to come in and play characters. Mm-hmm. So we had Kristen Bell as Ingrid DeForest, the Eagleton uh, personage who right. uh, winds up needing help for bankruptcy of their town because they spend money on ridiculous things. <laughs> uh, and then on Doppelgangers, uh, Billy Eichner showed up as Craig, who will be a recurring character. Uh, oh, okay. as Extremely intense (laughs) (laughs) rec person from Eagleton, which is his shtick. But uh, um, there was a great deal of debate, I remember, on Twitter and amongst other circles where Parks and Rec people congregate as to whether they they liked Craig or did not. Mm -hmm. Uh, As time goes forward, as he recurs more and more, you know, as with Jean Ralphio, definitely a character with which a little goes a long way. Yes. Um, that said, he didn't. He didn't bother me. I thought he was mostly funny, uh, just because yeah. he has a very different energy than anybody else in that right. cast and in that place. And so when he just blew through, it was always funny. And it's uh, fun to, to see him play. To see Donna play against yes, him, yes, you know, the two of them together. Yeah, are yeah, quite funny. So. She is really good. She's like, you know, kind of hanging in the background and then just gets her chances to shine and is so funny, uh, which uh, ginned up was, yes. was a Donna episode where she had accidentally tweeted something that she was meant for her personal account uh, on the Parks and Rec uh, account, which anybody who uses Twitter knows how these things happen. Yes. But uh, and uh, her, it winds up being a. Uh, Blown out, you know, deliberately blown all out of a proportion by Leslie's uh, political enemies, which jam who are craven and ridiculous and admittedly doing bad things and nobody recalls them. And I just you just have to say it's punny. You know, it's like it's right. Chinatown. It's punny. We just don't <laughs> ask questions. It's punny. It's just uh, the way things are. Oh, and there was also uh, Sam Elliott in the Doppelgangers. Oh, yeah. Anti-Ron. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he pops up one more time. Tatiana okay. Maslany, who is in uh, Gin It Up as a doctor uh, yes. looking to, to get a park and completely smote Tom. Uh, 
I can't remember if she comes up again, but again, it's just like, oh, you know, look who they got for this episode. Look what fan of uh, Parks and Rec has shown up to take a role in this one. So Although, was, was did, did anyone know who Tatiana Maslany was at that yes. point? Okay. So people that are, Orphan people, is a New Black was I still... I saw it on Twitter, new. <laughs> okay. I think it was when Orphan Black was still new and everybody loved it. Okay. It's lately, there seemed to have been diminishing returns on that show. But I think this was in the red hot, why is Ta- Tatiana Maslany not getting all the Emmys mm-hmm. seasons of Orphan Black? Okay. So now, does that mean that the general world knew who she was or just people on my Twitter feed? Right. That is a good question. Right. But I knew who she was. And okay. the people who, who write about it that I read knew who she was. And everybody mm-hmm. was very excited. And she was adorable, actually. Yeah, and that. that that whole plot was fun. Just yes. um, Tom falling for her and April, like, sort of half encouraging him and half, yes. like, shooting him in the foot as he tried to figure out how to... This was a... a- pretty good round of april episodes i mean the the a bit on doppelgangers where she like like gets a load of this girl who's her doppelganger right. and just completely Tinifer. goes with it <laughs> he's just making fun of her ruthlessly and this girl has no idea no clue and yeah. then and then in in gin it up where she kind of saves tom and and just is enjoying watching him turn himself inside out <laughs> however in the pawnee eagleton tip-off classic where our subplot is April going to vet school and then not, not going, going to vet school. school. <laughs> yeah, that was what weird. happened. I, I know. didn't quite. And I mean, I guess from her point of view, we were supposed to think that she just lost her nerve or decided she didn't want to make that big a departure in her life or what. I mean, I suppose you could argue it from a character point of view, but from a writer point of view, WTF? Yeah. And I was like, what was that? Did they just get writing it and think? Think, oh, you know what? We really don't want to send Aubrey Plaza away for several months while Chris Pratt is making Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's just keep her around. Yeah. Which was a good thing because in the next two episodes, she was awesome. But what, why even. Right. Why even bring it? It definitely sounded like they were, (laughs) it felt like they were backpedaling for sure. Like, you know, like she had said, oh, I'm going to be. I'm going to be busy, you know, like, write me out for several months. Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like halfway through filming that episode, she said, you know what, that movie I was going to do fell through. Can you write me back? <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh, sure. I well, say was, you changed your mind. No problem. That was really odd. And I don't remember hearing anything at the time about it. Uh, maybe there was some chatter, but it just seems like, oh, wait, no, oops. This <laughs> What happened? <laughs> I guess I maybe they need, felt that they needed it to start this whole Anne and Chris are going to move away. Who cares? Uh, thing, <laughs> but just just by this time, like both the actors, but are they still on the show? Really, they're still on the show. Oh, okay. Anne was not in Gin It Up at all. <laughs> she was completely absent yeah. from Gin It Up. Well, so. yeah. So it's it's you know, remind me that they're still on the show, basically, right. uh, and. So they will be not for that much longer, but, right. um, you know, how can we miss you if you won't go away? <laughs> so, so coming up, we are going to do four more for next mm-hmm. week. Um, they are filibuster, recall vote, fluoride, and the cones of Dunshire. Cones of Dunshire. <laughs> Have we not heard about the cones of Dunshire yet? No, because I don't know what they are. Okay. So. All right. There's a scene, and I, I didn't think it. I think it thought it was before that episode. I'll have to find which episode it was. But it's the the, the scene in which the cones of Dunshire is introduced is okay. It's one of my favorite parts of scenes ever, and I go and play it periodically just because it's it's such a wonderful Ben nerd scene. <laughs> well, uh, and so I, it, maybe I can assume that Ben is the best Ben. Yes, that's true. <laughs> So if there's an episode called Recall Vote, then does that mean that that storyline is coming to a close? I believe so. I can't really remember where things went from that. Uh, maybe I've just kind of blocked it all out. Um, mm-hmm. But it can't come soon enough. And um, right. just off of politics, please. <laughs> so so that we can watch the West Wing. <laughs> Yes, right. Now, speaking of politics, yes, like, let's get off of the politics of Parks and Rec so we can move on to to politics on West Wing, which are similarly oftentimes frustrating and annoying and set right. up in such a way that we are manipulated into feeling um, the character's frustration. 
right but, uh, so because the the current um episode of the west wing weekly podcast the most recent one was on the west wing episode called take this sabbath day yes. so that was last wednesdays it's there if you all want to go listen to it they are not having an episode this week uh, so right. we will will not be you know talking about it next month next tuesday but this is the one that they talked about last wednesday right and one of my favorites only because of joey lucas okay love love, love that character love this the is, actress. this love is marley the matlin they, Marley Matlin playing a deaf uh, campaign manager. And the way she, she is a recurring character. She comes back a number of times, mm -hmm. uh, including one of my favorite scenes ever that's in, I think, towards the end of season two, where they just use all the, all the possibilities of having a deaf, ca deaf character just to amazing effect. Mm -hmm. But uh, I really like that. She's not coming on as the deaf issues girl. She's not coming right. on to be about disability in any way. She's just a person, a woman doing her job. You know, mm -hmm. she's just a person coming in, trying to do something politically. There's this extra um, aspect to her character, which is, you know, provides some possibility for wacky misunderstanding because it's Josh and he's an idiot. But um <laughs> Still, you know, very quickly, she's completely respected and online as a person doing her job. And I, this is one of my favorite characters um, with any sort of disability on TV, mm -hmm. just because I really like the way they used her and the way she was portrayed. And so this was our introduction to her. And, and both did funny you and good? And did you happen to listen to the West Wing I Weekly did. episode? Yes. Okay, so you heard when they yes. discussed how she came to get that I'm part. I'm very happy they did that. And I remember that ep that Dear Louise episode from Sports Night, which we should do a marathon on after this because it's only two seasons. So it's quick. Yeah. But I remember that. And that's very interesting that she thought of that and that she would have been great if he had been able to write something for that. But mm -hmm. I'm glad that it came back as something for the West Wing because she's very well used. And I think I like... Uh, in this episode, and as it goes forward too, also the the presence of the interpreter and the thinking about what that means and how that mm -hmm. person functions, and the bit where at the end they're leaving and he says, "It was nice to meet you to Josh," and <laughs> so that was me saying that. <laughs> right, just Not so her. you know, that wasn't her. <laughs> <laughs> so though, I mean, he's got to be just invisible as a person mm -hmm. and just completely, um, you know, being her voice. But he is a individual in his own right too. So. And that comes comes to, into play in mm -hmm. future episodes too. So, the the main plot of the episode on capital punishment. Some very nice bits of it. I you know it's very well done. But for me, whenever I see this episode come up, I'm just so excited to see Joey Lucas introduced again. Mm -hmm. Thrilled with that. Right. Yeah. So, what there's... did you think of the uh, seeing it the first time? I I really enjoyed it too. I'm not sure. Um... On the podcast, on the West Wing Weekly podcast, Rishi Haraway said that it was like the best episode of TV of all time. I think yeah. is what he said. Like, <laughs> wow, that is major. I think I, there's even episodes of the West Wing that I would have put ahead of this would one, you? much less the best in TV ever of anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, I wasn't quite sure. I'm enough that will knock your socks off. But yeah. Um, yeah, you know, the thing is, the thing with The West Wing is when you watch, especially if you watched it before, mm -hmm. when you watch it again, you're like, oh, it's this one. And it's easy to get really excited about it. Oh, this was the best. This was the best. And then you watch another one. And you go, oh, my gosh, it's this one. Right. So I can probably hear that from him a bunch of times. Right. That won't be the only time. <laughs> it's that. easy to get excited when you see it again and you remember how much you loved it. Mm -hmm. um, but... But I, I, you know, I thought it was it was nicely done and had some good parts and was thoughtful, and um, had yeah. Had I mean, just that whole concept of like you know the president is he wants to be against capital punishment, but mm -hmm. it's not as simple as a lot of people would want right. it to be. You know, yeah. Um, well, you at, just at least you just not say just, no. You know, like well. <laughs> That's not kind of the yeah. way it works. Yeah, and continuing the, the what's been a theme so far this season of having the nerve to act on your beliefs 
even when there will be a political cost mm -hmm. and how difficult that is right. um, for someone who is a politician. You know, it's, it is a part of the job is you have to be, you know, you can't be a leader if everybody hates you. You have right. to worry about whether people are going to vote for you again or are going to vote for the people in your party when they have the midterms and are going to, you know, so all this stuff, even though we would like to say, well, no, you just go in there and you do what you feel is right. That's not always practical. So right. that's, I like the fact that there's a balance on this show where they, they do really consider it. Although there certainly is a weight on at some point Bartlett's going to break away and just do what he wants to do and we will all applaud. But in mm -hmm. the real world, I think this is much more right. the way it things happen. It always happen. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I liked the way they did that and that they didn't do it a last minute, you know, right. standing up and doing what was right that they – you know, did the thing that politicians would do in that situation mm -hmm. with many of them queasy about it and some of them not really caring one way or the other. But I like the way they balanced the humor of it, you know, with Toby getting this call and then knocking down all the chairs. All the the chairs. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then having the conversation with his rabbi where there was a certain amount of humor there too. And mm -hmm. even though they were, you know, discussing things very seriously. So a very nicely balanced up episode I thought nicely played and right. uh one of the few where I feel that that to some degree all the different viewpoints were pulled in I think they said this on the on the podcast is that even though the pro-capital punishment wasn't talked about as much you certainly got Charlie's point of view on that mm -hmm. and um and, and just the point of view that a lot of people have of just really not caring that much one way or the other right so you know seeing both points and um at least in cases like this, not feeling like it's something to spend political capital on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, and and the whole subplot with Josh being drunk and um, <laughs> <laughs> being very wearing, delicate. Wearing, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm delicate, and he's wearing the, yes. the foul weather gear <laughs> while his suit is being dry cleaned. <laughs> Now, if she could take his suit <laughs> to someone to some dry cleaner, why couldn't she go to his house and get him a clean suit? You know, <laughs> like <laughs> yes. uh, but yes, that, that wouldn't have been as really funny. Light. That's true. Very good light and dark, balanced nicely. And mm -hmm. Poor Sam never got off on his vacation, and uh, right, you know, wound up doing all that work for nothing, being disheartened. Right. So, um, good episode. And if you, uh, listeners, if you have not watched it, go watch it and then listen to the uh, West Wing Weekly podcast on it for some more insight and discussion. Yeah. And uh, the next, I we since we're not watching an episode of this for next week, I don't know what the next one is, but we will tell you then. But also, just go listen to the West Wing podcast and they will tell you, or you can go to their website and it will t say what the next one is. And... Um, we will we will get to it the week after that. Next week, in addition to Parks and Rec, and um, since we won't have the, the <laughs> addition West to Wing, yes, we thought we, we would have movies. right, and we so we thought we would check back in with so you think you can dance, which we watched like one or two episodes of at the beginning of the season when they were in the middle of um, selecting the teams or selecting the dancers that were going to appear. And since we really don't yeah. like audition episodes, we, we don't bailed. Like auditions. We don't like disappointing small children. We don't like stage parents. We don't like children who have obviously been coached to be adorable with a capital A. The whole thing was just disturbing. But. So we're going to give it another chance, though, and check back in. My 14-year-old daughter has has been watching. In fact, what she did yes. was just marathon everything that was on the <laughs> DVR, and she enjoyed it. So okay. she, she said that mm -hmm. – um, so what they did was they started with something like 100 dancers, mm -hmm. and they winnowed it down and winnowed it down, and then they got to where they had um, – she thinks it's maybe 10 all-star dancers yes. and mm -hmm. each of them got a team of like five kids. Yeah. And by now they've worked it down to just one kid per 
Yes. I, per expert. Right. That's what so I So that's seen. where it stands right now. Okay. So now it's starting to get so now are these kids performing with their expert or are they performing alone or are they performing with each other? Do we know? That I do not know. Okay. Well, so. we will watch it tonight, even though it will be we're recording this on Monday. You will be hearing this on Tuesday, so we will not be able to talk about it in this podcast, but we will watch it and we'll watch it next week and we will talk about it on next week's podcast and uh, see whether we want to continue to go forward. I like the idea of watching So You Think You Can Dance and talking about it. I like it when it's adults, professional, mm -hmm. who have professional aspirations. I'm really leery of the kids' stuff, but I, I will dip my toe in it again. We will watch a couple of apps, we will see, and then we will decide what we want to do right. for it. And I hope that there will never be an episode of Dancing with the Stars, Tot Edition, because that would be, <laughs> tot that, that would be difficult just from a height point of view. You know, yeah. But, unless they were, <laughs> unless you had. <laughs> yes. I guess they would have to be preteens and older. But um, anyway, uh, we'll yeah. see how this goes. So we'll we'll check it out and yes. we'll report back. And next then possibly time. next week, I will also uh, talk a little bit about the Hamilton, which is uh, Hamilton: The Revolution. I believe is the official title. It's the book about the musical Hamilton. As opposed to the book about Hamilton by Ron Chernow that right. Lynn Manuel Miranda adapted, which is what my friend, my friend got, oh, I got the Hamilton book. And I said, oh, you're reading about the musical? She says, no, the, the Hamilton book, you know, about Hamilton. I said, oh. The actual like, auto, no, the actual I want to read scholarly that. work. <laughs> I want like, the one with pictures of the <laughs> actors and lyrics of the songs and little <laughs> stories about the, the people involved. Well, that's what I want. So I am about a third of the way through. I'm reading it very carefully because it's a sort of an artsily put together book. And I feel like it might, you know, pages might start falling out at any time. So I'm, I am, you know, handling it with gloves and reading so, slowly and savoring every gorgeous page. Because so like Josh time, Lyman, it is delicate. That's it's right. Different. Exactly. <laughs> But I'm bump. Take us out, Kathy. <laughs> so that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and our weekly group chat. As always, you can find recaps, links, and opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Kat. Bye, everyone. Bye.